question is that the House did now adjourn. I call the member for Gilmore. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Sometimes the, in the different roles we take on as parliamentarians, we have the rare privilege to visit other countries to see the work of our government in delivering foreign aid where it's being directed and to see the work of international non-government organisations, to meet with extraordinary people who are volunteering and making a difference to the lives of so many others. I often sing the praises of our volunteers in Gilmore. Recently, I was able to draw some parallels and also be inspired for projects in our own region. Initially, ideas began to develop while being part of the parliamentary delegation to Papua New Guinea, then as the vice president of the Asia Forum for Parliamentarians on Population Development, AFPPD for short. The Australian relationship with Papua New Guinea is one of building capacity and support. It's one of prioritising health and education initiatives, which is a cross-country issue, much like here at home. But in PNG, there are many complexities that make this a difficult but not impossible task. Governance in any developing nation is an issue and one where Australia is assisting PNG. There is already an institute of public administration, but now with Australia's help there's a plan for a Pacific leadership and governance precinct. We met with future leaders for public service positions. The rationale for this precinct is to develop it as a governance hub of excellence for other Pacific Islanders to attend. This will give a better and more open distribution of foreign aid, as well as develop a public service capable of delivering the much needed health, education and security needs for their nations. It was inspiring to meet the graduates who had studied in our universities to hear their stories and their successes. The Shoalhaven Education Fund gives similar opportunities to passionate, dedicated students in our region. They too share a love of their country and have great pride in their achievements. The group known as CARE is delivering women's economic empowerment programs, particularly in the coffee industry where traditionally they're involved in just harvesting and post-harvesting activities, rarely with mar marketing. One of the women now, Celine, is an amazing coffee person and she's got connections in Canberra. Oxfam is funding programs to address um, gender equality and making all sorts of matters relating to Ox uh, domestic violence as priority. World Vision and Save the Children Fund are making significant impacts in Papua New Guinea. However, some of the strongest insights came from the 11th Women's and Parliamentary Conference sponsored by the AFPPD. And um, I was introducing one to one session and I just said, there is nothing greater in this world than enabling another person to become the best that they can be. Madam Curie believed that we must believe we are gifted for something and that this thing at whatever cost must be attained. So each of us gathered in this room, and also the House, is gifted for something. I would suggest that we're here to act as catalysts of change for our nations and our people, and most importantly for our women and our girls. Part of our journey to women's empowerment in developing nations is to reduce child marriage and domestic violence, as this all too often reduces the future economic contribution of the, that the woman can make. Domestic violence around the world is objectionable whether directed to a man, a woman or a child. It's wrong, and we need to help all those who suffer at the hands of someone they once cared for and once were a part of the care system. We collectively are greater than the sum of our individual selves, and I selected a quote from Malala Yousafzai. I raise up my voice, not so that I can shout, but so those, who, those without a voice can be heard. We cannot succeed if half of us are held back. We as parliamentarians have that responsibility. There were five inspirational sessions after that with take home messages for everyone attending, whether from a developed or a developing nation. Some can be easily adapted in Gilmore, and I'll be exploring these in a new model of opinion swapping and discussion. They included women's collectives, a need for financial literacy, increasing entrepreneurship enterprises, and better access to training, possibly for cultural purposes or an emerging industry. We need to encourage our youth to think up brilliant ideas, challenge them to focus on it and be encouraged to grow as a business or a concept. Look at these as achievement targets to change our outlook, to change our region and to change our nation. 
It was truly an inspirational trip and one that can be shared easily with others to make us feel better about ourselves and our relationship with other nations. It